okay so today is sunday and from today we are starting a new series on our channel it will be called as icu cases and in that we will not be discussing the whole cases and then it becomes a very long lecture and most 60 70 percent of the part everybody knows what they are doing in their icu how the case presents and how the course evolves but what we'll do is we'll pick those crucial moments those crucial signs those crucial images uh, from the cases so that everybody who is working in the icu should know those and they need to pick those uh, signs or images timely so that the management or the treatment part of the patient can be altered in a timely manner so we'll keep it short so that only key moments are picked from those cases these cases are from our own icus or the um, uh, signs which is sent to us by the members of our community from the icu channel in by next week we'll be uh, releasing a new email address to all of you on which you can send your images or uh, cases so that we can upload or discuss on the channel with your name uh, on that and before jumping on to uh, cases of today there is one more announcement that from today onwards or i could say uh, yesterday we are on instagram now the purpose of going on instagram is different from the youtube channel we will not mix the youtube channel and the instagram the instagram is for like sort of spot diagnosis spot signs the images the clinical signs or the ventilator settings ventilator graph means they will be a spot single static image which anyone who looks to it who is working the icu should pick those signs immediately so with uh, and we'll try to upload it on a daily basis if not uh, 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 daily we'll try to upload at least within 48 hours a new images so that you keep practicing you keep seeing those images and over a period of time you can become expert in identifying some most of the common things which are going in the icus and the uh, instagram account uh, name is same the icu channel and we have uh, posted the link in the um, uh, description of this video so with that we'll be discussing two cases today one is a cardiac case and one is a neuro case let's go to them okay so the first one is a cardiac case uh, this was uh, some 50 60 50 55 year old lady who came with 3 4 days of uneasiness in the chest and presented at er and this was an ecg done outside she went to some other hospital where they took this ecg and then sent to us so one tip before seeing an uh, whenever you see an ecg always try to figure out whether we are dealing with a vascular event or whether they are dealing a conduction abnormality obviously at times the vascular uh, ischemia uh, give rise to conduction abnormality but for reading an ecg you can divide in these two uh, sections now whenever you are looking at a conduction abnormality three four teams things you need to understand you proceed in that manner means i use it you may find it useful see see first you need to see whether the p wave is generating from sinus load whether the rhythm is generating from your sa node whether the rhythm is sinus secondly if it is not sinus then it from somewhere around the atria so it can be either sinus rhythm or can be atrial rhythm now that generated rhythm how much time is taking uh, to reach the AV node, whether it's uh, going regularly or whether there is delay. Thirdly, is there a problem at the conduction uh, AV junction where on AV junction it is halting uh, properly or whether it is not conducting to the ventricles. And when it has crossed the AV node, whether it is communicating properly to both the bundles left and right, whether there is a bundle branch block in that manner. So SA node conduction towards the AV node, then AV node and then the pathway, Purkinje's pathway. So this was the ECG of that lady. Now grossly when you see the rhythm, you see that there is a, some problem with the, um, eye, on eyeballing you see there is some problem with the rhythm disturbance. So let's apply our technique. So there is a P wave which is upright, P wave is upright, it's in lead to, in V1 also it's inverted. So most likely it seems it is a sinus rhythm it is originating from the SA node now after SA node where it is traveling uh, how it's the travel time to the AV node is equal or, or not it is uh, seen by the PR interval so P SA node means P wave conducting to the AV node okay fine this much then um, here 
after p there is no uh, qra so there is a drop again we'll see there is a p a wave then there is a p uh, pr interval mm, then here also p wave there is a drop okay so every in these two beats every alternate be every beat is being dropped alternatively it is not commuting with the av uh, beyond the av node means there is a problem with the junction now let's proceed there is an sa node p wave generated then traveled reach the av junction and there is a qrs complex fine then again there is a p wave but the time taken here is a bit prolonged than the previous one so there is a prolonged pr interval followed by qrs then uh there is t wave seems to be merged with p wave and there is a drop again there is a p pr qrs t then p prolong qrs uh, prolong pr qrs and there is a uh, p and then drop so this is mobis type 1 block means in mobis type 1 what happens uh the pr intervals get prolonged uh, at regular intervals and there is a drop means uh, suppose an employee comes at 9 pm 9 am then at 9 10 then at 9 20 and, and you know that uh, by 9 30 he will not come so it's a predictable response means pr intervals gets prolonged and there is a drop you can continue here further also p wave pr interval okay p wave and pr interval and uh, prolonged pr interval and this is drop here so this was the ecg recorded outside so it was mobis type 1 why this patient developed mobis type 1 you can get clue from here there are depressions in the st segment in anterior lids and there is subtle st elevations in the inferior lid so it could be a inferior wall mi leading to conduction blocks in this type is mobis type 2 now this was the ecg recorded in our hospital you can clearly see that there is a p wave pr interval qrs there st then again p prolonged pr qrs uh, t wave merged with p wave and there is drop so one uh, p wave one p wave with prolonged pr then again p wave drop one p wave with prolong uh, with pr qrs one p wave then again drop so this is getting irregular also now in a predict uh, it was showing a predictable uh, course pr then pr prolong and then drop pr then pr prolong then drop but here in between what you can see is every second uh, beat is also getting drop here it is pr here it is p and then again it, there is a drop again here there is a pr there is prolong pr and then drop so what is happening is this mobis type 1 block is getting converted into more evolve it is getting evolved into more uh for the uh, higher blocks chb or mobis type 2 so this this needs to be treated so we took the patient to the angiography and we found it prox uh, proximal rc was completely blocked we could not take the follow up ecg as the patient didn't want didn't agree for the further intervention and went to some other hospital uh, maybe so what you need to understand that whenever you see a conduction block abnormalities always keep these four points in mind where the rhythm is generating whether it's a sa node or in the atria both are different how it is getting uh, conducted to av node whether there is a delay in the av node and how beyond av node this uh, rhythm is getting conducted so you will get an idea of the conduction system what i want to teach you is the approach how you should approach ecgs or how you should approach any investigation it's not uh, telling you to remember by heart just apply your techniques in each and every investigation which you are seeing so this block because of the was due to mi and this was mobile type 1 block which was evolving over a period of time into further uh, complete heart blocks now the second case was it's a, a, a patient who was shifted post op to our icu uh, transphenoidal route there was a pituitary adenoma and it was operated it he was having some vision disturbances because of optic plasma co compression and then uh, we need to monitor his vision also and post op things now after 2 hours of the surgery the sister came to us that patient is uh, pouring lot of amount of urine you can see so whenever you see 
this urine is getting clear also how it is pouring no diuretic was given just see how fast the urine is coming you can observe here you can appreciate the color is getting lighter it was darker before and few hours later it was completely white and the urine it is pouring very fast so basically what this patient is having is central diabetes insipidus this was developing diabetes insipidus in which what happened the posterior pituitary and the hypothalamus fails to secrete the antidiuretic hormone because of that surgery uh, it could be mild or transient or permanent and because adh is not secreted the kidneys are not able to absorb uh, water and this water gets uh, secreted through the kidneys very freely so any urine output more than 250 or 2 300 ml per hour for more than 3 hours in post of in such cases in pituitary surgeries you need to observe that this patient at risk of developing diabetes insipidus and what the data shows shows that if a patient uh, how you will monitor one thing is obviously through um, um, uh, seeing the urine output second thing is you monitor the sodium if the free water will be lost through urine the sodium levels will uh, rise in the blood and the patient will develop hypernatremia now literature says that if within 5 days of such surgeries if the sodium levels remain below 145 then there are very less chances of developing diabetes insipidus further on in such patient but if the sodium levels rises above 145 in such post of cases then the chance of developing diabetes insipidus on a long term also remains very high in such patients so you need to monitor the sodium levels if sodium levels are rising then this the patient is definitely uh, 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 developing diabetes insipidus then you need to give fluids and use desmopressin through nasal puffs uh, for that so when you pick a disease it's very easy to treat the idea behind such uh, cases will be you need to pick the things timely so whenever you have a patient of posterior pituitary surgery always watch for the urine output always watch for a keep uh, for diabetes insipidus in such cases so by next week we'll be giving you an email address on which you can send your cases you can send your images or whatever your tip you want to uh, share with us will uh, the selected ones will uh, be posting on the website and on the channel with your name credit so that's all for today thank you see you next week